The sun is shining. I've had a brand new haircut. I've got my Van Halen t-shirt on. Does this feel like summer or what? What we need is a quality IPA and we're going back to the Lupulus X single hop series with this catchy titled hop TR12304CR. What's it like? What's it all about? Check out the review to find out. Welcome back to Rocker's Beer Review. Yes, your eyes are not deceiving you, but I have had a haircut and I think this sleek new look is going to do wonders for the channel and more people are going to tune in and the 99.3% of male viewers is going to go down and we're going to get a few female viewers watching the channel. Well, maybe, maybe not. Anyway, today's beer is this beer. Now, we've we reviewed four of the Buxton single hop, experimental hop um, series of IPAs. This one is the TRI2304CR. Not very catchy. I mean, a lot of the time that when they're experimental, they usually use as HCB and then a number, um, and then they obviously come up with a name. I don't know how they come up with a name. I don't know who dis discovers the name. I presume that the farm where the hop is developed or grown or whatever, they, they get the choice, they choose the name. But this one at the moment just got a number, needs a name. Who knows, by the time you're watching this, this could be called, I don't know, Rockers. Yeah, that's a good name for a hop, isn't it? The Rocker's Hop. Full of life and fruity. Yeah, that's absolutely me all over. Anyway, this beer has a is a new hop strain. I'm going to read out a bit of blurb here. It's a result of a Yakima Chief's extensive research into polyfunctional phyllos, a major component in modern hop aroma. Yeah, I mean, it's there's a lot of science here. Um, produced at Yakima Chief's Cairo Hop Facility, I had a discussion with someone just today about what well, I'm not quite sure this Cairo hops. Now we've got things like Spectrum liquid hops. You know, it's getting more and more scientific, this uh, this beer brewing lark. Anyway, um, and the focus of this TRI2304CR is to create a single hop strand which uses mass amounts of juicy flavour. The malt base provides sweetness and full mouthfeel that emphasise hop profile. Flavours of rich, smooth honey sweet strawberries and cream, watermelon and peach slices. I mean, if there was ever, you know, a four or four different flavors in there all melted in together, I've never I've never seen that. Yes, we get watermelon on on some on some hops. Yes, peaches, obviously the stone fruit um is is quite you know, used quite a lot in um, in lots of different hops. Strawberries and cream, not so much. Honey, yeah, I mean, we have had beer, we had a beer from Beer 52 uh, that had a sort of slight honey flavour, but I don't know if that was an adjunct to make it honey. So there's a lot going on in this beer, and let's open it up and see whether it's as exciting and interesting as, uh, as the blurb makes out, or will it be just like, you know, a, a, a tropical juice bomb? Let's get it in the glass, see what it's like. So most of these beers have looked similar, um, except for the, the Rakao one, which had a sort of much more of a straw custard color. This one looks a lot like the others in the fact that it's it's got an orange tinge, a slight, it's got a haze to it, but I wouldn't say it was that, that big a haze, because if you look at the bottom, you can actually see through it a little bit. Bit darker at the top, lighter at the bottom, literally a finger of head that probably is not gonna stick around too long. Yeah, I mean, it looks like a lot of the other. Let's get some aromas. Get a lot of peach and orange. Yeah, there's a lot of peach and orange in here, um, but it's quite sweet. The peach is like, you know, tin peaches, it's got it like in syrup, which I suppose, you know, could say it's a little bit of the sort of honey sort of coming into it. See on the picture there, got a bit of wildlife in there. There's a magpie that's just landed on the uh, on the rabbit run. Yeah, smells pretty good actually. Very juicy and fruity, but I'm getting lots of peach and oranges, um, and this and a sweetness of it, which are which again I think is the honey. But I'm not really getting strawberries and cream. And I'm not I'm not really getting watermelon. Let's see what it tastes like. Cheers, everyone. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of the peach up front in the flavour. 
and there's an orangey sort of that orange sort of develops into a sort of into that sort of melon flavor the thing is with watermelon it's not really got a flavor is it it's just very watery it's not like a honeydew melon it's got a little bit more flavor a watermelon has got a taste but it's not but it's you know it's literally water water let's go in again what i'm really trying to find is that strawberries and cream you get that sweetness which you could sort of put down to, you know, you could say yeah, it's honey, you could say it's strawberries because it's a, quite a sweet fruit flavour. For me, it comes off the peach, though, in that sort of tin peach that's usually in a sort of syrup that gives it that sweet flavour. You get a little bit of pininess on the back end as well. But it's quite refreshing, actually. It's very juicy. It's very much, and it's very much, it's not, I wouldn't say it's overly tropical at all. There's not much citrus in there either. The stone fruit, the peach, is not your sort of very sort of dank stone fruit, which, you know, your mangoes and your, your sort of overripe peaches and your apricots even. But there is a slight piney bitterness in there as well it's there's a lot going on and it's quite difficult to get my head around exactly what flavors i'm really getting there for me i'm getting a lot of peach and then i'm getting orange that sort of stops that peach overwhelming the whole flavor then you get little pockets of of a sort of watermelon and even the honeydew melon because of that sort of sweet honey sort of slight flavor in there then you get a very sort of pininess on the back end. I wouldn't say it goes too bitter, but you've definitely got that sort of pininess, resinous sort of uh, flavour that, you know, is quite common when you're getting orange, oranges. And, then, and there is oranges in here. There's definitely oranges. And then that makes me think more of that sort of West Coast style. But it's all wrapped up in quite a soft body with low carbonation. It's pretty good. Again, it's an experimental hop. And like I've said on all the other videos, it's probably got a, a place because there's, there's quite a lot of unique flavours in here. But it's... It doesn't have an identity enough. It needs something, just it needs a backbone to it. It needs a a big quality, big hitting sort of uh, hop like your Citra, like your Mosaic, like your Simcoe. You know, they're the three big hitters that can work with other hops and maybe they will work with this. It's pretty good and I'm glad I've tried it because it's quite unlike any other taste that I've had. You know, you get to a point where you drink a lot, and I drink a lot of New England IPAs, as you, as you know, and you're getting a lot of that mango and pineapple and grapefruit on citrus fruits, or I'm, or I'm drinking other sort of IPAs where you're getting much more of the stone fruits, you know, your mangoes and your peaches and apricots. This is a quite different. It's getting more and more sort of bitter, in, you know, and it coats the back of the throat a little bit more. It's a lot more of those sort of orangey flavours. And I always associate those sort of orangey flavours more with your West Coast. But the body's definitely more, more East Coast than it is West Coast. It's quite soft. Um, and the bitterness is, is subtle. You know, it just comes in after a while and doesn't hang around too, too much. But just sort of dries the, the back of the throat to make you want to keep drinking it. It's a pretty good beer. Let's get some scores. Okay, the scores are in for this Lupulus X single hop using the very difficult to read TRI 2304CR. Very catchy. You're never going to, you know, if they, if they suddenly do a two TRI 2304CB, you're not going to remember that compared with this one. So uh, that needs a new name. It needs a better name. I think the Rocker Hop would be, auto, would be good. But... It's not spectacular, I don't think, in terms of a hop on its own. It, it's got lots of going on, but it, it, it still needs something else. But let's go through the scores. Aroma first. Well, when I popped the can open, I mean, I did have those preconceptions in terms of what the blurb said about that hop. And you are getting peach, a peach 
uh, aroma in there, but you're getting quite a lot of sort of orange and a little bit of bitter orange, I would say as well. Um, other sort of aromas, there's definitely something a little bit green in there, you know, like, you know, they say it's also, you know, it could be a watermelon. This is definitely something fresh like a melon in there. And there is a little element of sweetness, which could be the sort of honey that they're talking about. But there's just a sweetness, but that goes more for me with the, with the peaches. So it's a very nice aroma. I'm giving it 13. Appearance-wise, whereas I like a lot of the uh, the, the other ones, uh, apart from the Racco, um, so it's a yellow, it's an orangey, hazy sort of, what's not overly hazy, but slight hazy, the head's still sort of there actually, and you can see a nice lace in the glass, but I'm giving it similar to those seven out of 10. Then the flavor, well, the flavor is similar to the uh, to the aromas. You get a big hit of peaches and oranges. Then there's something else in there. There's some sweet pockets of sweetness, which you could sort of say is the honey. I don't, I think we've had beers, which uh, we had a beer 52 beer, which I think was from Poland. Um, and that had a much more of a bigger sort of honey flavor sweetness to it. This sweetness is not, it's almost like the sweetness that goes with the peaches, but you are getting that. You're getting that sort of melon flavor as well. I'm not getting any of the strawberries and cream um, that it that it's talked about. Certainly not getting that. You're not getting much in the way of citrus. You're not getting in the, uh, you know in terms of lemons and limes and grapefruits. You're not getting much in terms of tropical. There's no pineapple. There's not really any mango in there at all either. Maybe a bit of passion fruit, I suppose. But I always think that orange, peach, passion fruit. They sort of you know you can easily misinterpret those flavors within within that. So you are getting those flavors. There's a lot going on. You're getting this piney bitterness at the end that really, I suppose it, it, it does spoil it a little bit. It doesn't taste lovely and juicy. When you first taste it, you think, oh, this is gonna be nice and juicy, but then you get that piney bitterness there on the back end and it and it and it stops it being that that uh, that juicy and that fruity anymore. Um, so for flavor wise, I'm giving it 33. Value for money, well, like all these cans, three and a half pounds. I still think it's for an experimental hop, something new, something interesting. Three pound fifty or thereabouts, I think it was, um, is pretty good value. So I'm giving it an eight out of ten. And my overall experience, well, I still think that the the Rakao one was the one to beat. That had all kinds of interesting flavours as well. Um, this one is similar for me to the um, the Olicana. Yeah, the Olicana was, was a bit similar to this. It, it needs something else. It, it, it does taste a little, although the body's, you know, it's fairly soft and the body sort of medium to light, it needs some extra flavor to give it a bit of backbone. Um, and that sort of, for me, ruins the, the sort of overall experience. So I'm giving it a 12. It's that piney bitterness again that creeps in. It needs something a bit more fresh air. It needs a big tropical flavour in there. It needs, also, it needs something very light and bright and zesty, like like a lemon, um, just to give it a, a bit of a better flavour. So 12 for overall. Tighten those scores up. We get a 73. It's still a recommended beer. So this very easy to forget uh, hop with this letters and numbers. I'm not going to repeat that again. It's worth trying, you know. I don't know if anyone else had that this hop before. Maybe by now, by the time you see this, this hop's got a name, and uh, and it's been used in every other beer that you that we can that we that we know. Um, I recently did a review for for a beer which has we seem to be getting a lot of strato in beers, which is a still a fairly new one. It's it's quite new in terms of these sort of new hops. So maybe that started off as a TRR three four nine two one eleven B um, hop, but, but then became a little bit more punchy with strata. So this one could be something punchier later. But we've got one more to go. Opus, I think it is. Um, that, if I remember, is orangey as well. It says orange and, and floral notes. So I expect that to be quite similar as well. I don't know whether it's something to do with the fact that these are all, that a lot of these are British hops and we're getting much more, it seems like the orangey sort of passion fruit flavors are, are more dominant than the more tropical sort of flavors. Uh, but we'll wait and see what that's like. I'm glad I've tried these. And I'm all into having as many different experimental hops as, as we can we can we can find. Um, there seems to be new ones coming out all the time. Different types of hop, different types of you know the way that they're the, the liquid hops and the, and the, as I said these spectrum ones. 
everything's different, everything's new, everything's exciting, but I think that's a good thing. So until the next one, you know what you're going to do. Keep on rocking.